Hey what's up guys this is Sohan and you are watching Technical Spark channel. Friends in this video I am going to demonstrate how to activate your Tram encryption agent on offline machine which means the machine which are not connected or not going to connect to your EPO server. So in this situation it's become very difficult to encrypt the machine right to make sure that machine is compliant as per the your organization policy. But since you don't have any connectivity between uh, your EPO server and the manager agent, hence you won't be able to encrypt that machine using EPO. So there is a different procedure needs to be followed. So that is what I'm going to cover in this video. So for your preference, this video may be a little longer. So make sure you watch this video till the end so that you will not face any issue. So I guess intro is enough. So let's check out practically how you can do that after this small intro video. Welcome back guys. Uh, friends, let's launch our EPO server very first so that I can demonstrate to you guys how you can do this step by step. Okay, let me log in with my admin credentials. Once you logged in under system tree, as you could see that I don't have any system which is uh, you know installed and managed by this particular EPO because I have removed everything. This is my test environment so I don't have to worry about this. So very first thing you will have to do is click on new system. Once you selected that, select this option create and download agent installation package and if in case if you have select, you know by default this particular option is checked which is embed credential in package then unselect that because this is something which we don't require because on the agent machine this credential will not work because this machine is not managed on which we are going to install and even if it's managed and there is no communication between EPO and your uh, agent then yeah then also it's not required so make sure this is unticked select the latest uh, Telex agent for windows package which is available and hit ok button so that it will help you to generate the Telex agent package so this is the you know, one of the prerequisite which we require now right click on this particular agent save link as and it will help you to save the package click on save so it's got saved in my download folder let's check out that oh download it to be completed yeah i got an error keep show more yeah keep anyway perfect now it's probably downloaded let's replace the screen yeah frame package so this is one of the thing which we require now guys uh, the second thing which we require is go to the your Trilix uh, setup file which you have downloaded from the download portals and this is where I have extracted my latest version of uh, Trilix agent and go to the MG software package and host let's extract this particular package here also extract because we need to copy two files from two different different folder which we require on the machine which we want to encrypt so this is where it's extracted so based on your system whether it's a 32 gb uh, 32 bit or 64 bit you will have to download the appropriate package so my system is 64 bit so i'm copying this package okay now let me save into the primary location which is the download folder perfect okay so our agent has been downloaded so what we'll do we'll have to download the plugin installer for that again go to the same directory and this time we are going to into the drive intuition for pc Guys, if in case if you don't know from where I have downloaded, again, okay, check out my check-in uh, video, okay, uh, where I have checked in a uh, uh, travel encryption package and extension. In this video, I have shown you that how you can step by step download the things, okay, so that you will not face any issue when you want to download the setup file. The extraction process has been completed. Let's open and this is the plugin installer. So uh, here again, my system is 64 bit, so I'm only downloading 64 bit. If in case your system is 32 bit then you will have to use 32 bit a plugin installer okay now let me copy this as well mfp pc64 let's paste it here now guys we will have to download one more tool that is uh, let me show you this yeah here it is drive encryption admin tools okay so guys this tool uh, is also getting downloaded when you download the entire package okay so let me extract this and from this folder, we'll just have to download this EPOA Gen XML tool. So let's copy that into the download folder. Paste. 
now guys uh, we'll have to download one policy okay so for that we'll have to go to the policy catalog and under policy catalog select drive encryption expand the product settings okay click on my default policy and then you will have to click on export right click save link as so current name is my default right so we'll have to rename it to the epo underscore policy and click on save the policy has been downloaded let's check out yeah perfect guys now the next thing we'll have to do is let's create one txt file and give this file name as a user list dot txt okay let me remove the extension because it's by default txt only enter now let's enter one username so it could be sohanchi colon space password okay now let's save this file Guys, the next thing we'll have to do is let's open one command prompt with admin privileges. Okay, so right click and run as an administrator. And let me navigate uh, this particular CMD to download folder. So cd space c colon backslash users, then administrator, and then download folder. Now, the next command we'll have to run is this one. So EPO OHN XML.exe. So this is the exe which I'm going to execute. So if you don't know much about this, then just type double hyphen and then choose help. So it will give the all the available applicable commands which you can use with this utility. And guys, I just forgot to mention that if you want to add multiple users into the that particular drive encryption, then yeah, you can add multiple. So Sohanji is my username and the authentication type would be password. And if you want to use any token, then yeah, you will have to enter username, then colon space your token. Okay, so it could be any token. Just check out the compatibility list or supportability list for the more information. Like what are the things are supported when you authenticate using token. So this is the information which provided by this particular tool. Or instead of here, let's directly go to the our client machine and let me execute all these things there. So guys, I have downloaded all the required things to my uh, test machine. So let me just close this particular EPO server. So it will be safer site and we'll be able to check whether it's really working or not. Okay. Now let me shut it down. Our EPO server. So guys, this is my, you know, test machine. And here, as you could see, I have downloaded all the packages here, which we just created on our Telix EPO server. Okay, now if I just show you into the this particular uh, taskbar, then I don't have Telex agent installed. Let me showcase you the same thing from Wiz.cpl as well. See, I don't have any Telex agent installed or any software which is comes from the Telex. Okay, now let's open the command prompt here again. CMD run as an administrator. So this is my admin privilege command prompt. Let's navigate to this particular path. For that CD, okay, the path is C colon backslash users, then Sohan, then desktop. Under this, we have a folder called Telix. Enter that. So we came to the same path on our command prompt. And as I shown earlier, that our steps will remain same. If you need more information, yeah, you can use this command to get the more idea on the supported command okay these are the command which is supported now guys let me enter one more command so that we'll go with the default settings which is uh, you know uh, comes the default policy which we have exported and based on that only we are going to import the user list so that it will be supported okay there are you know, so multiple commands available which you can use so these are the things which you can always refer okay it has the description also so currently I'm going to use it's just a user list and once you enter that click on enter okay it looks like the command has been completed successfully and now let's check out what exactly it has created offline activation command and ES offline activation CMD which means our operation has been successfully completed we are able to create the package okay and there is no error message has been popped up okay guys in coming few steps we would require 
this particular packages okay so the next steps we have to do is we'll very first install frame package on this machine so right click and click on run as an administrator let me enter the credential because this machine don't have admin credential the at least agent installation has been started just to give you an idea again guys uh, if you want to encrypt any machine then you will have to copy one two three and four these files into that end user machine okay wherever you want to install and activate this drive encryption agent offline the rest of the files are not needed okay our trace agent has been successfully installed on this machine now guys the next thing we will have to do is let's install our EEPC agent and the plugin so very first I will install EEPC agent on this machine this is the MSI file so I am not getting much options so let me right click and choose install yes I got the admin pop up for the credentials so let me enter that and installation has been begin Telix drive encryption agent it look like it is successfully installed let's go to the about screen yeah He's got it now. Telix time encryption agent. Okay. Last policy check update is shows unknown because it's never communicated with our EPO server. Now uh, let's install the second package, which is plugin. Let me enter admin credential. Oh, okay, perfect. Now it's required one restart to this client system. Okay, so let's click on yes. And reboot will automatically initiate. Let me log into the machine. Okay, my reboot has been completed, guys. Okay, guys, let's check out what it says inactive, right? And let me show you again with a under about window that my system is still not communicating with EPO server. Okay because my EPO server is shut down so let me close this and open this uh, the folder which we have copied now we will have to run this offline activation this is the package which we generated using our command prompt to execute this simply right click and choose run as an administrator enter your admin credential if you are not administrator on that particular machine and click on yes Activating and you see creating preboot file system, adding drive encryption user activation has been completed successfully and we started encrypting my drive and the command prompt is gone automatically, right? We haven't done anything. So this is how you can you know encrypt your Trailix drive encryption uh, machine uh, offline. Now just for your sake, let me reboot this machine once and we'll see. Where whether I am getting any login prompt or not. So let me close this and reboot the system once. Perfect guys. Now we are started getting the prompt to enter your username and password. Okay. So let me enter the username which we you know uh, enter into the txt file. So that would be Sohan G. Hit enter. Okay. The username has been accepted. Now, the, what password we have to enter? Because as we saw in my previous videos, when we uh, encrypt any EPO manager system, we'll have to enter the password, which is one two three four five six seven, right? But when we offline activate drive encryption, then our password has been getting changed to one two three four five. So let me enter that one two three four five and enter. Perfect. Now it's asking me to you know set the password. So let me set the password like my windows credential and hit on ok what is your favorite color let me put it white what is your pet's name let me change the question because i don't have any pet what is your favorite place so let me say satara and satara is my district guys if in case if you don't know hey he is asking one more question the third and last one what is your favorite film so actually I am getting confused with every film because my you know the choices are getting changed so let me say don't know and enter so it's accepted now click on finish okay let's up this yeah enter my username and password 
for Windows and I'm getting successfully logged in. We'll check the driver encryption status now also whether it's still getting encrypted or not for our surety. Let me check. Yeah, it's appear now. Quick setting and it shows active. Yeah, 5.9 percent, which means it's encrypting our hard disk and it's going on. Now, friends, I hope you have understood uh, that how exactly things works, guys. In the very first only, I said this video will become little longer, right? Now, just to you know give the idea, let me just go to the about session and see my Telix agent is still not communicating, right? It shows status unknown. So let me power on my Telix agent so that I can show you what exactly happen when one of the offline machine communicates with EPO server because as you know that we have installed a Telix agent package which is this one. So this when the system uh, you know uh, come into the corporate network it should get uh, communicated by epo.technicalspark.com so that is my EPO server. So let me show you that that how you can how exactly this particular encryption process be behave when the system uh, EPO comes online. So let's start our EPO server. My EPO server is getting powered on. Let me enter the credential for my EPO server. Guys, I'm testing these various test uh, cases just for you guys so that you won't make anything wrong in your production environment. Because as you know, data is always very critical and we don't get the importance of the data until and unless we lost those. Okay, so make sure whatever the steps you perform with little bit of care. Don't do anything blindly. Always test the things in your test environment and then only go into the production. Okay? Like me. I have confidence so I am directly doing on production. Even yeah. But in your case, just do it you know, practically. Now friends, on our EPO server, let me launch my EPO console. So let's double click on that. And our EPO screen is getting loaded. Perfect. Let's sign in. Friends, now I have successfully logged into my EPO and in my EPO dashboard itself for time encryption, I couldn't see any system. Now let's check out the same in uh, system tree as well so that we will be very sure. Okay, let me select here this group and also group and there is no systems are showing here. The count is zero items. Now guys, let's go to our client machine and enforce the policy and we'll see how it behaves. So this is my client machine which is still getting encrypted. The percentage of 61% guys, I went for a T. So during this time, uh, the you know, it's got encrypted. So let me just open Trix agent status monitor. And earlier it was not able to communicate with EPO. Now let's check out how exactly it behaves now. Okay, the communication has been started guys. Let me maximize this package uploaded to EPO server successfully and it was started communication right without any issue. See, now the interesting part is what exactly happened with your this machine updating system policy. Policy enforcement has been complete and it started decrypting guys. Earlier it was encrypting and now it's started decrypting. Why? Let me tell you. Now let's go back to our Terex CPU server. We have uh, you know exported one policy that is policy catalog. And our uh, try encryption, product setting, my default. This is what the policy which we have uh, exported, right? Let me open this policy. Now if I go to the encryption under this policy, then it's selected none. Okay, and that is the reason the entire configuration has been, you know, rolled back. Now let me just go to the system tree, and this is a system which has got automatically popped up. Let's check out where exactly this machine is appear. Yeah, it's in Lost and Found Technical Spark Domain Group. Now let me check out which policy this particular system has. So agent, edit person, single system. Now if I go to the drive encryption, then see. This system has got the policy which is my default. Let me close this. 
So this is how things are working guys. If you want to you know encrypt this machine then yeah then since this machine is communicated with UPO then yeah you have all the control. You can uh, assign the user using your, uh, your encryption user uh, option and encrypt that machine again by assigning appropriate policy and that's it. Now let's go to the client machine. So hopefully guys now you have got so you know idea of how the things works and I'm hoping that going further you will also do the same thing in your lab and let me know how exactly this process goes friends if you want me to prepare one more video on how to decrypt offline activated machines okay then for that I'm just aiming that this particular video should reach 50 likes in next 20 days if I receive then yeah I will definitely create video on that topic because our series is also going to be 8 in next 15 to 20 days so I need this target to be completed very soon otherwise I will not be able to create video on decryption process of offline activated machines also right now is decrypting it's just because it's communicated with EPO but what if the machine is never communicated with EPO so this is what the trick so make sure you like this video and make the count to 50 likes if in case if you have any question, queries, feedback, then feel free to type me in the comment box below. And if you found this video useful, then please click on the like button and don't forget to share and subscribe. Click on the bell icon so that you will never miss my future video notification. So that's it in this video. This is Sohan signing out. I'll catch you in the next amazing video. Till then, bye bye.